Okay, guys, so uh, the quick little video, we're going to do a little video here. Actually, it won't be all that quick, but it's going to be very, very important. It's uh, one of the things I often talk about is how important it is to know your numbers, to be making sure you're keeping up with your accounting, um, and to uh, make sure you're paying your taxes and all that kind of stuff. So if you're skipping over the bookkeeping, which is a very, very common thing to do when somebody first goes into business, you're really setting yourself up for a lot of headaches uh, and potentially trouble in the future. So right off the bat, the bookkeeping is the easiest when you first start and it's the easiest to get started when you first start. If you've been in business for several months or a year or something like that, and, and, and all of a sudden you're trying to get your bookkeeping together just because your taxes are due, then uh, it's going to be very, very difficult to uh, to get everything done correctly like it should be, keep, and keep you legal and, and keep the tax man happy and all that kind of stuff. So we'll do a quick screen share right here, run through some common things uh, on QuickBooks. This is by no means a thorough uh, course on using QuickBooks. This you need to learn how to use QuickBooks separately, but this video will show you how a uh, it relates to a junk removal business, and uh, it will kind of highlight the fact that QuickBooks is not difficult. Uh, it just takes a little bit of practice, and it's fairly it's fairly intuitive with just basic accounting knowledge. You don't even need to know accounting uh, all that well to, to operate QuickBooks. So here we go. Hey guys, so right now you're looking at a fake uh, junk removal company. We just called it the Junk Removal Co. Um, the chart of accounts for a typical junk removal company has been uploaded into this account. Um, but we'll, let's just roll right into some common things that you're going to do. So if you're using Vonigo, this you would need a separate video. If you're using any sort of scheduling or invoicing software, um, that syncs with QuickBooks and the way you operate is going to be completely different. You still need to know all this information because from time to time you will still go about it this way. Uh, this is really aimed at the, the kind of the small time operators just getting going uh, using paper uh, invoices still like we did for probably three, four years. Uh, and then taking those, keeping up the, with that paperwork and then taking time uh, at the end of the day or, or one day a week or whatever to get everything entered into the system. So very first thing, let's say if you did a job for a customer and they did not pay you, you need to enter an invoice. So you'll click the plus symbol up there and then you'll click invoice. There we go, and this will pop up. And let's say it was for Joe Schmo. You then click add Joe Schmo. If you want to enter in details, you can. Typically, if you're just copying, well, your invoice is seeing this customer, so you would want to go ahead and enter in an address. 123 ABC Avenue. And we'll say Raleigh NC 27606. Uh, email address joe at schmo.com. And this will get that email sent off to him. So we'll click save. And then from this point, um, whatever the date is the job occurred, let's say the job occurred on May 28th. You know, that'll be the invoice date. The due date, if it's net 30, you select net 30, as you see the due date comes up there. Now, online payments is not set up here. I would encourage you to go ahead and select, get online payments uh, set up and select both of these. Accept cards as well as free bank transfer. Always make it easy on your people to uh, pay you. So, you come down here to product slash service. Generally, we just have one item when we're entering this stuff in. Now, we do have to add this new because we copied over the chart of accounts, but not the products and services. So, we just normally call it junk removal, like junk removal services. Click add junk removal. It is a service category. We just kind of ignore that. Come down to make sure it says sales, which it does. The price you'll enter, the description you're entering. Now you can do multiple price points. Like you can do half load, quarter load, third load if you want. We typically just do junk removal um, when we when we hand enter it. Now with Vonigo, our, our see that that's because our invoicing software does it for us. But you actually probably would want to if you're doing it separate. You would want to do different uh, items like half load. The reason being that way you can run a report and see kind of what your average, what job size you do the most of, and all that sort of deal. And you can go ahead and input in price. So let's say your half load is 325. Sales. Let's say sales information half load of junk removal. 
save and close. And that will input this in here. If all that looks correct, you'd click save and send, and it's gonna email it off to joe at schmo.com. Now, um, once Joe gets this, if he would like to pay it by either card or bank transfer, there will be a link where he'll be able to do that. Uh, you'll need to click send again. This might throw an error message up since this is not set up for online payment. It didn't. So, um, but anyway, Joe Joe will get that, and uh, if he wants to follow through and pay, he can, or he can mail you a check. Um, you're, uh, you'll have this set up where your address is listed on the invoice. So, that is if the, if you did a job for the customer and you're invoicing them, they haven't paid. Now, the majority of what we recommend at JRA is to collect money while you're at the job. That's for pretty much all residential customers. We'll invoice businesses, but uh, residential customers, we try and always get money while we're there. So what it, the easiest thing to do at that point, actually, I'll tell you what, instead of skipping around here, let's say he's made the payment. Then what you need to do if he has made the payment, it's come over here to invoicing, and you can you can see uh, his invoice right here. You can also go to um, the plus symbol and click receive payment. And at that point, you can type in the customer's name, Joe Schmo. There's Joe. There's what he owes. So in this case, let's say he makes the payment today. Let's say he made it by check. I would put the check number in. Let's say it's one two three four. The amount received, 325. Tab, also, um, you can't see, I'm hitting the tab button right here, and that skips me around. That's a quick little way to operate uh, with QuickBooks. So you got 325. Uh, make sure all that matches up. Make sure your balance down here, you don't have anything left over as a credit. All this look good, good and is entered. Then you can click Save and Close if you're only earning in one. Okay, so let's say now you did that residential job and you collected payment it, and uh, the paper invoice already reflects that. You've got payment information on it. But your paper invoice should show the date of the job and how it was, the price of the job, how it was paid, that sort of deal. So what you need here is a sales receipt because what you have to do, if you enter as an invoice, you have to then go back in and enter as, as a, pay, you have to enter a payment as well. So you've got two steps in there. Well, in this case, if you, all, you did the job and you collected payment at the same time, just go to sales receipt. And let's say we did another job for Joe. This time he was at his house and he paid. So you got Joe Schmo. Let's say it's half load. We got 325 right there. And then you can click save and close. So you always just you know verify all this information. The date is the, the actual date of the job. You wanna do that so your, your P&L reports and your financial reports appear correctly. Um, everything else is pretty straightforward, though. So you can send them a receipt if you'd like uh, by clicking Save and Send. If you don't want to send a receipt, just click Save and Close. Okay, so um, the all right. Now let's say you've got some bills you need to enter. So you've you what what we do is we have a accounts payable and accounts receivable bin. So um, well, we don't have an accounts receivable bin anymore. All that's done electronically now through Vonnego. Our accounts payable bin is literally, it's an organizer that sits on uh, our bookkeeper's desk. Any bills we get, get placed in there. And then we have one email address that our invoices are all sent to. So I suggest having an email, a, a, a one email address that all you do is you get invoices to. You can have it forward to your regular email, but that way when it comes time to pay bills, you're not having to sift through a million different emails. You just go straight to that right, that uh, invoice email and you pay your bills. We recommend paying bills once a week. Uh, any more than that, and it's a lot of times you're just wasting time. It takes you a little while to get things set up and get in the bill paying mode. So we, we pay bills on every Thursday and we just always make sure that uh, you know we're paying attention to due dates and we're mailing out any checks that are gonna come due within the next uh, 10 days or so. So to enter this bill, the first thing you're gonna do is just come up here to bill. You click the plus. Again, the plus symbol, you get about every, anything you want through the plus symbol. And then let's say you're paying Duke Energy. Again, this is a new account, fake account, Duke Energy. We'll input in their address. It's like 10456 East Tryon. I'm guessing at this. I know it's wrong, but it's 
It's actually somewhat close. Vord Boulevard, Charlotte, and C two eight two two six, something like that. Doesn't really matter. Uh, they don't. We don't need to enter an email address for them. Duke Energy. You click save. All right, and then whatever the date of the bill, so the invoice date is what this will be. So let's say this was May 23rd. And then the due date, whatever the due date of the bill is, you'll input that. Let's say it's due June 14th. In, in, I always input in the bill number as well. So we'll just enter in some random numbers here. And then this would be utilities. Right here is an expense. And then the amount uh, we'll say our utility bill was $150 for that particular month. And then at that point, let's click Save and New. Let's get one other one entered. You can see it one more time. Let's say this is the dirty landfill. You click it. You'll do the details one more time. One, two, three, dirty road and dirty. And then C, two, five, six, seven, one, one, something like that. Um, and then this would be disposal fees. And let's say your disposal fees for that month were three thousand dollars. So you did somewhere around uh, thirty-four, thirty-five thousand dollars worth of sales that month. If you're having three thousand dollars in disposal, if that's the only landfill you use, which you won't use just one landfill, but this is theoretical. Okay, let's say that we got two expenses in there, so let's close that out. So you've got the bills entered. So those bills are gonna ride in there until you're ready to pay them. Now, we we uh, we wait fairly late on paying bills for the majority of like your Duke Energies and, and um, you know, large landfills, county stuff, you know, stuff like that. We, we, we turn things in just a few days before it's due. Credit card bills, uh, car payments, that sort of stuff. Um, the independent guys, like we've got our, our mechanic and, and some of the smaller operations that do stuff for you, they jump on stuff real quick. Uh, we like to pay them immediately because they, they really respect that and they're a lot, they're a lot more likely to go ahead and make sure, make your work a priority if they know they're not going to have to wait around on you, uh, getting on you paying an invoice. So the county people doesn't really, that doesn't really matter to them. You know, the big outfits, it doesn't matter uh, at that point. You just want to make sure you're not late so it doesn't affect your credit with them or, uh, credit score, all that good stuff, obviously. Okay, so uh, now we want to pay these bills. Let's say it's now time to pay them. So we click the, again the plus mark, click pay bills. You're going to see your two bills right here, Duke Dirty Landfill and Duke Energy. This is the checking account we're going to use right here. Um, the payment date, whatever day you're going to be cutting this check, we'll keep it at June 1st. Starting check number, say is 1001. You're going to select both of these. It should input in the whatever you're going to pay, you'll have in here. So generally, you'll pay stuff in full. If it's a credit card, you might do uh, you, you might potentially pay less. And then you'll come over here and you click Save and Print. And again, new, new account, so it's going to ask you that kind of stuff. So let's try it one more time. Uh, start, all right, so this brings us to the print check. Starting check number. Always verify the starting check number is correct. Before you click anything when it comes to doing much with QuickBooks, always verify all the information is right. Because if this gets off, it's much harder to go in, back into the chart of accounts or the register and correct this stuff. It's a lot easier to make sure it's done correctly at the start. So right here, all this looks right. Dirty Landfill, Duke Energy. Click Preview and Print. You click the print icon up here. As you see, you have two checks. You insert the checks into your printer. We're not going to print, but uh, you would then just click print right here, and that would run the checks through. Now, after you click X, it's going to ask if everything printed okay. You'll click done if they did. If they did not, and it was only some of the checks messed up, select which check numbers messed up on printing. And if none of them printed, if something happened, then click no. Keep all checks in the print checks list, and you can access that later. All right, the print check again is in the, the, the plus icon. If you just want to access the checks needed to be printed, just come down to plus, click print checks. So the next thing that's important is your profit and loss statement. Now this isn't gonna look like a whole lot, 
because uh, we've got very few expenses and very few income entered on here. But you go over here to reports, you'll click profit and loss. At that point, you um, let's say if you want to pull it for the month, you're generally going to pull it for the month. So let's just say uh, I'm trying to remember what our income was. I tell you what, let's keep it at the year. If you want to do it the month, you just click this month. You'll click run report. Uh, we didn't have any. Ex yeah, actually, okay. No, we didn't have any expenses in in in, in this month. So let's keep it at the year. But um, the other thing you'll do is when you run this report. Click row slash column, click percent of income, click year to date, and click run report. And uh, when you break it out in the month, here we go. So this will show you right here. Since we click year to, year to date, we get to see exactly how we're looking for the month. Obviously, these, there's no expenses listed here. You would normally have expenses. So uh, you'll see how you're doing for the month, and you'll come over here. How are you doing for the entire year? And then what are your expense percentages now? as a percentage of uh, income. Um, this is showing for the month, not for the year. So let's click this year. And obviously these are so far out. They're not even close to being correct. So as you can see right here, uh, your disposal fees are 461.54%. Um, you wanna see these, this is where I was, I'm always talking about what are your percentages, what are your numbers? So your disposal percentage should ride somewhere around eight to 10% depending on your market. Um, you might be able to get a little less than that if you're really heavy on recycling and selling items uh, or if your disposal fees are particularly cheap and you're in a market with, with not a whole lot of competition, but you're going to figure somewhere around 8 9% generally on your disposal fees. Um, if you're first starting and doing a lot of deals, that could be, that could be higher. Uh, you know, and then your fuel expense is going to be somewhere around 6 or 7%. Now, that is it's inching up some. We might have to raise prices some. Um, job support that came out today was great, so uh, you, we very well could start uh, start inching prices up here soon. Uh, wages are rising too, but uh, anyway, um, that's how you run your profit and loss statement. Now that's a very important statement, but it's not it's not going to show you how much cash you're bringing in and out. So if you come back to report list, one of my favorite reports is the statement of cash flows. So let's look at this entire year right here, the statement of cash flows. You want to see this be a positive number generally. You know, you know, you're always looking for a positive number. So what this means is your profit and loss statement, when you're paying principal on a loan, when you're paying down the principal on a loan, it does not count against your profit and loss. So if you have a bunch of loans going out, if you're paying out several thousand dollars, if you're paying out three thousand a month in loans, and you're showing a profit on your PL statement of four thousand. It's very well possible that you go and gain a thousand in cash. Now that's not necessarily the case. You need to know a lot more because that also counts for uh, receivables. Let's say you had a slower month than you did the previous month, but you had a lot of receivables come in. Then the receivables are going to count for your cash flows in the month you receive them. So uh, this is this is, you've got to have positive cash flow in order to survive. That's also good if you if you hit up a line of credit. If you hit up a line of credit for 10, 10k it's going to add 10k to your cash flow cash flow is showing that you're going to keep maintain enough cash to keep running your business this is a very very important financial statement <laughs> one we always pay close, close attention to the balance sheet you need to learn how to read a balance sheet uh, this doesn't show like a whole lot here because we don't have anything really entered but a balance sheet, if you have issues with your books, you can always, always find it in your balance sheet. So you need to do separate research on how to read a balance sheet. Um, those are the main reports you're going to use. Now, QuickBooks has a lot of other different types of reports. Take them, take a look, and uh, some of them you'll, you'll definitely use. Um, but the P&L, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows, you need to have that monthly. You need to know exactly what you're doing, and you need to review that P&L closely. And if you have any expense percentages getting out, you need to investigate what's going on. You might need to raise your prices. You might have somebody underquoting jobs. You might have some theft going on. Uh, you might have a, a, a truck that's having maintenance problems and, and using up a lot more fuel. So there's uh, there's there's all kinds of stuff that can be going on, uh, and the, the your financial statements will uh, tell the story. Now. Um, one report you'll want to do, you want to keep up at least weekly. You know, you want to be reviewing 
what's called your AR report. That's accounts receivables. That's people that owe you money. So as you start doing more jobs for commercial companies, they will be wanting you to uh, invoice them. They won't pay on the spot. So you need to go to reports and click accounts receivable aging detail. Now everybody that we have invoiced in this fake account has paid, so it's not gonna show anything. But let's say that first guy, Joe Schmo, we invoiced him. Let's say he hadn't paid. It's going to show you um, what what he owes. So let's let's I tell you what. Let's make this quick. Let's do a quick invoice. For, let's we'll do another one for Joe Schmo. And let's make it April first. It's an appropriate date. Let's say it was due May first. The amount of one thousand dollars. And you would normally click save and send. We're gonna click save and close. Hopefully nobody has Joe at Schmo.com. If not, I'm sure they get a lot of spam. And then all of a sudden you see on this AR aging detail, you've got 31 to 60 days past due. And it's gonna break it down to current. So anybody that's not overdue, you've got uh, 31 to 60 days overdue. You've got 60 to 90 and over 90 is how it generally breaks it down. And every week there needs, you need to have a system in place. This is part of what the Jerry business package covers. And I can cover it some in uh, consulting calls too on how to collect um, money. Um, but this is a problem. This has been an issue we had at one, at one point. And you've got to stay on top of your accounts receivable every week. It's a very uh, big issue to have. There's, there's been times we've had 50 or $60,000 uh, in, in accounts receivable. And that's just that's that's too much in the junk removal business. That's uh, that's almost too much. So um, we've done a lot better job ever since we hired a full time bookkeeper uh, to keep up with that stuff. But um, back when we were trying to balance work on the truck and scheduling guys and repairing vehicles and all that kind of stuff, demoli you know, doing a little bit of demolition, and we were trying to do the books on our own, we'd get behind on AR all the time. But a full time bookkeeper solves that. Uh, junk Removal Authority will be offering bookkeeping services for junk removal businesses in the near future. We don't yet. Um, but that is a service we're definitely going to provide. Uh, it's going to have some, uh, it should be priced very, very competitively. And then you've got people, the only pe things those bookkeepers are going to be doing is junk removal stuff. So we're, uh, we will be uh, releasing that out pretty soon. Um, guys, this has been a very, very brief rundown on, on uh, accounts receivable. I will also tell you, you can sync bank accounts. So bank accounts, credit cards, that sort of stuff can be synced and all those expenses will get entered in automatically. Uh, if they cannot sync, some, some platforms don't sync, especially fuel cards. You'll have to actually enter in it as an expense once you get it on once you get it on your bank statement or you uh, look online at your online banking. You'll enter it as an expense, and you'll do exactly like we entered in that check or that uh, bill. Uh, just always verify the information, enter how they paid, cash, check, credit card, what date you received payment. All that kind of stuff is uh, stuff you need to stay on top of. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed that. It was a very, very, very brief overview of QuickBooks. And the majority of people, when you first get started especially, uh, you can do all of your QuickBooks on your own. QuickBooks does have the uh, capability of doing payroll as well. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. Um, I'm happy to show everybody individually that if you want to do a consulting call. In about an hour, we can run through uh, how to do payroll and all that sort of deal. Um, but... I, I want to make it clear to everybody, don't skip your books. It's also a hell of a lot harder to grow uh, your business when you're skipping over your book work because you're not entirely certain how much money you're really making. You know, especially if those of y'all um, that uh, are getting cash and just putting it straight in your pocket and you're not reporting it and all that kind of stuff uh, or you're not tracking it especially. Uh, we report everything. All the money we get gets reported. We don't, we don't slip in any cash. We don't withhold any cash from uh, going on those reports. And, and that's actually, um, uh, when I tell people that, it surprises a lot of people. But uh, that has been one of the biggest things we, we can attribute our success to um, is the fact we track everything. I mean, I can just I can read off every single percentage down to a half percentage each month. Once I've looked at that P&L statement, I've looked at it throughout the month, I, I memorize those numbers. I know where they should be. I know where they're currently at. And then if there's a problem, we've recently had a problem that turned out to be theft. We, we figure out what's going on and we fix it. But you don't know you've got a problem until you know your numbers. You don't know your numbers unless you're keeping up with your accounting, with your bookkeeping correctly. So uh, if you've got any questions at all, guys, you can email me, lee at junkremovalauthority.com. If you need any help whatsoever, you can call the office at 919-466-9322. 
919-466-9322. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great weekend.